All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to use a external hard drive as an on-site backup for your Synology NAS. So there's a lot of reasons why you should use an external hard drive to backup your Synology on-site. And it all really boils down to, one, it's super easy to use, and two, it's easy to take with you. So I'm pretty sure every model of Synology comes with at least one USB port. And so all you have to do is grab an external hard drive, and by the way, they're super cheap, and plug it into your Synology. Then you can set it up with Hyper Backup to constantly be backing up versions to this external hard drive. Then if you ever have a critical failure or you have an entire volume crash and it's truly unrecoverable from DSM, that data will not overwrite the data on the drive. And so it's a really great solution to having a backup of your data while being very lightweight and cheap. Another thing is you don't have to use those expensive NAS drives because it's in its own case and it's not powered up that often. And it really doesn't matter how quick the throughput is because it's just left there running all by itself. Now, another thing you can do is actually what's called shuck a drive and pull it out and stick it in your NAS as an actual hard drive bay. The issue with this is one, it is subject to more vibration, and two, it takes up a drive bay. It's actually what I do though, because it's a lot cleaner and you don't have to power it yourself. But yeah, so I've just got a regular WD Easy Story here, and we're just gonna go ahead and plug it into our Synology. All right, so I've just hooked up the external hard drive and plugged it in, and that's all I did. And now we're in DSM, and we can see in the upper right-hand corner right here, there's this USB disk that is connected, and it's an easy store. So that means everything is working fine. And now backing up to it using Hyper Backup is incredibly easy. So if you don't have Hyper Backup, just go ahead and download it from the Package Center. But I've already got it installed here. And so all we're gonna do is click on it. And these are the backup tasks. I've got a local backup and an external backup. And so to create a new one, you just hit this plus button right here. We're gonna be doing a data backup because I don't use iSCSI. And there's a bunch of different options here. You can do a remote NAS, you can do local, folder in USB, and some other options. But what we're gonna be doing is local folder or USB. And there's two options, single version or the multi version. I would recommend using the multi-version one because there's no reason not to, and it gives you a lot more peace of mind, not only from data loss, but also if you deleted a file or broke it, and you wanna go see the file five revisions ago, it will be stored on this external hard drive. And so now we choose the backup task, and this is where we're going to choose where the destination is. And so it's that USB share one, and we'll call it USB backup. And one thing to note about this, Hyper Backup actually has a Windows, Mac, and Linux client called Hyper Backup Explorer that will allow you to mount this drive. And if it's encrypted, given the password, you can actually restore all of these files. If your Synology dies and you no longer want to use Synology, you will still have access to all these files. So it's not a proprietary system, which is really good for backups. And so now we're just going to click next. And here's where we choose which folders we would like to back up. And it can be multiple. You could even choose specific files within folders. And there's a ton of options. You can even go into file filters. If you just want to do like images that are .jpg, it will use the star and a .jpg. And that will say, OK, we will use any files with the extension .jpg. And so you can really refine it. Synology's put a lot of effort into this and it's working really well. But I just want to back up this entire ISO file directory, which is where I store my Linux ISOs. And so we're just going to select that. And by the way, you can select multiple and hit next. Here you can also choose to back up your applications. And so this will back up the entire config for all of these different applications if that's also really important to you. 
So for things like photo station, I would highly recommend backing those up because if you lost that, it would be a huge pain to restore those configurations. And now we just give it a task name. So we'll do, and there's just some basic settings here. Notifications will tell you every time it happens. So right here, you'll see that I've got a lot of these notifications. Then you can also set up a change log. So it'll say, oh, this file changed to this. You can also automatically unmount the drive as soon as it's finished. For certain workflows, that's great if you want to just plug it in, leave it overnight and plug it out and bring it somewhere else for an offsite cold backup. And then I would highly recommend compressing it, having it scheduled. And this is the great thing, having the integrity check. This will go through and check the data to make sure that everything is still working. And that way you know your backups have not gotten broken. And finally, the other thing I would recommend doing is having client-side encryption, which allows the drive to be encrypted. So if it walks off, the data is encrypted. So just enter a password. And now it will warn you, hey, if you lose this password, the data is toast. But we know that. And now we get to pick up what's called a rotation. So we're using multi-version backupping. And so we're going to have a bunch of different versions of these files, but these are what's called thin backups. They do not take up the entire space of the entire file system, every single snapshot. Instead, they only take up the differences in the size of the files. So say I make a difference to a file and it's a 20 megabyte difference. My backup will be 20 megabytes bigger in that section. And so it all adds up. The one place it does really add up is deleted files because deleted files are kept as long as they're in a snapshot. And so that's why we've got this snapshot rotation. So I would recommend having it. And it's got a smart feature. So basically what it allows you to do is it prioritizes having more snapshots from more recent times. So you don't have 50 backups from five years ago and only 50 backups of this year. You instead would have maybe 50 backups of this year and maybe two backups of four years ago. And that way you have the data you're probably going to want a lot more refinement on is the recent stuff versus the stuff that's really old. And so it's a really efficient way of keeping it. So I would recommend doing that. And then you can choose your maximum kept versions. And I would start off with 256 and then kind of see how your space is going if you start running out of space, you can start to decrease this. Although they are very thin backups, so it's really not gonna do a ton. And so now we're done, so we're just gonna hit apply. And so you probably did not catch that, but it just downloaded the encryption key to my local hard drive on my computer, which means that if I do forget the password, I can use that key to unlock this data. It's really nice that Synology makes sure you have that just in case something does go wrong. And so we're going to get the option to back up now and I'm going to say yes. And it's going to kick it off right now. All right. And so now that that's backed up, let's go ahead and modify it a little bit. So we have some deltas to look at. So I'm gonna to go to a file station, that ISOs file, and just create a folder because I can do that within DSM. So now I've created this test folder. We'll do a backup now. And now we'll delete it. And so the reason we did that was to basically show how files will work when you've deleted them and added them in and how we can look through backups to find all of these things. All right, and so now let's say, oh no, we really needed that test file that, well, doesn't really have anything in it, but say you did. All we have to do is go into version list and verify our password. And we can go into them. And so we know that we deleted it for this backup. So let's look at it here. And so we can actually just click this backup explorer. And so from within here, we can actually go through and then we've got this calendar right here and go through different backups. 
since they're all on the same day, we can see right here there's a three. And so this is the one, the second one that I took once I added the test folder so we can go before it. See the test folder does not exist. Then the next backup where I added it. And then the final backup where I deleted it again. And so we can just grab that file and just click restore. And it will go right back in to where it came from. And so oh, if we open up here, we can go ahead and just refresh it. And right here, the test folder is right back where we needed it. And so this is just an awesome feature to be able to have and just have total control over your data, especially great for when you deleted something, but it could have been deleted months ago. If you remember the date, it makes it really easy to find. And it's all very secure and just a great setup. And so because it's independent of your NAS, if that crashes, all the data still remains within the drive. And so it's a really easy backup point. Now this can't take the place of an offsite backup for if your NAS gets stolen or you have fire or water damage, but it can take the place of a hard crash where you've got total data failure on your NAS and all the files become corrupted. This will still protect you against that and it will also protect you against deletions. It's a great, easy way to back up your data for honestly really cheap. I'd highly recommend buying a drive and just plugging it in and honestly forgetting about it. Hyper Backup takes care of the rest. All right, well, I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope this was helpful. Keep backing up your data and have a good one. Bye.